Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Dots. Today I am going to share you what is observer design pattern or we can also call it publisher or subscriber design pattern. Okay, so let's move ahead without wasting time. So the points that I am going to cover with this pattern are what is observer design pattern, why observer design pattern is important to understand and we will also cover the use cases advantages and code coverage and basic understanding of object oriented programming will be very helpful and i strongly suggest you to watch the suggested videos which are types of design pattern solid design principle and repository pattern okay so let's move ahead towards our agenda so uh, let's go by definition first define a one to many dependency between objects so that when one object changes state all of its dependents are notified and updated accordingly okay the important point is one to many dependency and all its dependents are notified and updated automatically okay and let's read out the concept so in this pattern there are many observer or we can also call them objects that are observing a particular subject observers want to notify when there is a change made inside the subject so they register themselves to the subject when they lost interest in the subject then simply unregistered from the subject and the whole idea can be summarized as using this pattern an object or you can say subject can send notification to multiple observers or you can say a set of objects at the same time and you can also take example just like social media on twitter once the moment you subscribe any of your favorite member you start getting notification from them and once you unsubscribe then you will not receive anything okay so it is the same now let's take another example from the IT world consider a simple user interface based application this user interface is connected to some database if a change occurs in database then UI should be notified so that it can update it its display according to the change assume that you are the person responsible for maintaining a particular database in your organization whenever there is a change made to the database you want to get a notification so that you can take action if necessary so let's have a look of the class diagram how that will look like as you can see we have one interface which is observer and in that we have one method which is update okay now we are implementing i observer in two of our classes one is observer type 1 and second is observer type 2 and in both of them you can see we have one field which is name of the observer and two methods we have one is observer type and second one is update okay and now you can see on the left hand side we have one subject which is another interface and that contains three methods one is register for registering the observer another one is unregister which is for unregister the observer and the third one is notify registered user and this is for to send the notification to all the subscriber or you can say to all the observers okay and if you, if you will see the implementation of this i subject interface providing implementation of all three methods and also including one flag okay and with the help of that i will demonstrate the whole idea of publisher and subscriber so let's see all these things in action in visual studio this is my visual studio you can see this is the same solution that i was using in my previous design pattern sessions and now i have created one separate folder which is observer pattern and in that i have created all the required classes okay just to make it clear first go by the interface which is the very first requirement one is i observer okay it contains one method update and receiving integer variable and how we are implementing this observer we are simply in constructor first we are setting its name okay now our name can be uh, easily available of this observer type 1 and we are creating one http context so that we can write to the response okay and in the update method what we are simply doing we are receiving integer variable and with the help of that we are writing the message 
to the response the observer has received an alert someone has updated db flag value in subject to this which will be the new value so i is our new value which is updated by someone else in the subject side and this is observer type 2 there is no major change in observer type 1 and 2 both are implementing i observer only the change in message only okay and if you will see the message we are mentioning name of the observer notified db flag value in subject at present this okay so we are notifying the observer type 2 okay now let's go to the i subject interface as i shown you earlier we have three in three methods register unregister and notify registered user okay and how we are implementing you can see we have created one list of i observer type okay and at the time of registering we are adding every observer in this list and for unregistered type we are removing the observer from this list very simple and for notifying the registered user what we are calling we are simply loop through every ob uh, observer which is available in this observer list and calling the observer update method this is pretty much simple okay and one more important point when we will call the i notify registered user there is a property flag you can see here and at the time of getting we are simply returning the flag variable it is of integer type but when we are setting the value at that time we are notifying all the registered users okay we will send the flag value from here and it will call this method and we are calling observer update and it will go to suppose observer type 1 receives the new value and it will display the alert okay that's how we are using now let's go to the startup class how we are consuming this whole idea so first we will create the i observer type variable and in that we are assigning observer type 1 then observer type 2 it is again of type observer type 1 and now i observer and we are assigning observer type 2 okay so now we have three database subscriber subscriber 1 2 and 3 okay then after we are creating instance of subject okay and then we are registering all three subscribers which is pretty much simple i mean we are adding in the list okay and just writing to the response i mean how it will look like and then we are changing the value of flag to 5 okay the moment we will change the value it will call the notify one okay and when notify it will write to the response okay the user has been notified and then after what we are doing we are unregistering the first db subscriber okay and then again we are changing the value it means now subscriber 1 is unregistered from the notification so only subscriber 2 and 3 will get the notification then again observer 1 again subscribe okay and then we are changing the value and now all the notification will be received by all three subscribers don't worry about the piece of code you will get the github repo link in the description of this video okay so let's see all these things in action let me run this solution now our application is loaded successfully and the result is as expected first we updating the flag to 5 then subscriber 1 has received an alert someone has changed the updated db flag okay then subscriber 2 also receiving the same notification subscriber 3 we change the message it says notified db flag value in subject at present 5 if you can recall we remove the subscriber 1 and then change the value flag to 50 now only subscriber 2 and 3 getting notified okay and then again subscriber 1 subscribe to the subject and he is also start receiving the new value that we are setting in flag okay first subscriber 2 then subscriber 3 and the most recently subscribe 1 is the subscriber 1 let's go back to the presentation to discuss very very important points now we have already seen how the whole idea is working let's move ahead you will see the presence of this pattern in event driven software okay this is very important line in event driven software this pattern is very famous modern language like c sharp have already built in support for handling these events and following this pattern okay and these constructs will make a developer life very easier if you are already familiar with 
.NET Framework that I believe so. You will see that in C Sharp you already have generic system.i observable and system.i observer interface where the generic type parameter is used to provide notifications. Okay, so I hope all these points are clear, but still you have few points. Let me go through my question and answer session for you. Okay, that I specially prepared. So the question might be, you can think if I have only one observer, then I may not need to set up the interface. Is this understanding correct? So I will say yes, but if you want to follow the pure object oriented programming guidelines, you may always prefer interfaces or abstract classes instead of using concrete class. Next question can be, can we add or remove observers at runtime? Yes, notice that at the beginning of the program to get notification, DB subscriber one registered himself, then unregistered himself and registers. So this is completely possible. Next question can be, if ready-made constructs exist, why we are writing our own code? So the whole idea is you cannot change read only or you can say ready-made functionalities but i believe that when you try to implement the concept yourself by taking the repository and because the link is available in the description of this video you gain an understanding that can help you to better use those ready-made constructs okay that will be very helpful for you now a next question can be what are the key benefits of the observer pattern so there are many but the main is subjects and their registered user or you can say observers make up a loosely coupled system i mean if you notice in a observer we are not especially specifying the hard-coded class name okay so, so they do not need to know each other explicitly so this is the beauty of this pattern now what are the key challenges associated with an observer pattern so definitely every pattern has its pros and cons so if i say undoubtedly Memory leak is the greatest concern when you deal with events in C sharp that also referred as a lapsed listener problem in some cases. An automatic garbage collector may not always help you in this context. I have covered all the points that I want to cover. I hope you like this video. If you have any question, any suggestion, drop into the comment box. Your feedback is very important. That's the only inspiration for me to create such videos. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and don't forget to like and subscribe.